Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass and we're going to try something new today. We're going to give you one of my favorite recipes that I cook all the time. So if you want to see an Airstream Base Camp cooking show, stay tuned. first part to fried rice is the rice itself. So the trick is the rice actually has to be cooked and cold in order to properly stir fry it up. One downfall of fried rice is you need to make the rice up ahead of time. So I usually either make it in the morning if I remember or right now it's five o'clock at night. So I'm gonna make this up and then actually just put it in the fridge for tomorrow. So in order to make rice, you do one part rice, two parts water. So we're going to start with the water and actually I've got water left in my pot because I leave it in there when I boil the water in the morning for my coffee. So by saving the water in there, I just save water overall. Now I'll measure it back in. So this is a half cup measure. Actually, it was almost two cups right there. All right, we got the two cups of water. Napoleon is here to supervise. Where is my, there it is. All right, we're gonna let that two cups of water come to a boil and then we're gonna put in one part rice. So it'll be two cups of water, one cup rice. All right, the water is boiling. So now we are going to stir in one cup of rice. And I think this is brown rice, so it's going to take longer than white rice to cook. This is where it would be good to have labels so you know if it's brown rice or white rice. So I'm pretty sure it's brown. We're going to leave it on here for about 45 minutes to cook on a simmer. And then our rice will be done. And one of the things is you want to make as few dishes as possible while living in the RV. So I dumped the rice in. I rinsed it in the boiling hot water. I am just going to wipe it dry and we're gonna call that a clean dish. All right now we're gonna take the rice down from high heat down to a simmer so as low as it goes on the base camp stove we'll cover it and we'll be back in 45 minutes. When you're boiling something it's always good to leave your rooftop vent popped a little bit to let the steam out otherwise you end up with this. So as you can see, I completely fogged up the window. This actually isn't that bad. I have actually fogged up all of the windows in here before, but it's better to pop a vent so you don't have to worry about that condensation. All right, 45 minutes is up and our rice is looking like rice. So we're gonna turn the stove off. Everything in there is looking pretty good. So this is still way too hot to cook fried rice in. What I'm going to do is put it in these leftover Thai food containers and put it in the fridge and let it cool down overnight. All right, everybody, and welcome back to day two of fried rice. So I have all of the ingredients laid out. This requires celery, carrots, eggs, butter, onion, frozen peas, your cooked rice, and then soy sauce. The best thing about the fried rice is that you can add almost anything you want to it. So I make up this base and then throughout the week as I eat the leftovers, I'll add in additional fried eggs, avocado, chicken, steak, really whatever kind of protein I can find in the fridge. So tonight we're just gonna make the basic fried rice. Napoleon is my little cooking assistant. He's actually more up here trying to steal the food. So you will see me continually put him down on the ground. So the first thing we're going to do is get everything chopped up. This requires two carrots and two stalks of celery. I do carry these in the base camp fridge just like this. The celery has frozen itself, so we'll see how that tastes. Yeah, not carrots. There's your carrots. Oh yeah, that is frozen celery. We're gonna peel the carrots up real quick here so we can cut them up. You may notice that I am wearing very similar clothing to yesterday. Yes, I promise you this is day two of the fried rice. 
It's just that I live in an RV, so you wear the same things more than once. The carrots are all peeled up. I have a bowl and I'm just going to put everything right into that bowl when I chop it up. So that way I can keep all the counters nice and clean. Again, fried rice is kind of whatever you want. So for the carrots, I usually do kind of a bite size piece. And then when you get into the thicker end of the carrot, I do cut it in half. Sometimes I'll even cut it in quarters, depending on how big the carrot is. That way, as you're eating it, the carrot pieces aren't too big. Okay, next we are going to cut up the really frozen, <laughs> really frozen celery. You alright, bud? The neighbors are moving, so Jasper's barking. The celery is quite funky looking. <laughs> alright, and then we're going to clean the ice off the cutting board. That is a new one. I don't usually have to do that. But we're going to take all that ice and throw it in the sink. Okay, and next we're going to cut up the onion. What I'm going to do is rinse the onion as well as the knife in cold water, and then that will help keep down on whatever it is in the onion that makes you tear up. It seems to work. The other trick is I wear contacts, and supposedly wearing contacts also really helps to keep the tears down when you're cutting up an onion. And the way I cut up an onion is I cut it in half and then I actually start slicing it this way with the grain and then that allows it so when you go in and you chop it you have all the pieces together and it naturally forms these smaller pieces. I don't mince my onion down to nothing because I like I love onion. So I have it this way that way when you saute it up and you eat it you can still taste and see the onion. Okay, all of those are chopped now. So we can start cooking. Woohoo! All right, we are going to cook everything in the cast iron skillet. Not only does it taste amazing, but also is really easy to clean up, which is a huge benefit when you live in an RV. So the first thing we're going to do is take a decent amount of butter, about eh, roughly that much. You can kind of eyeball it. If you want to use oil instead, you're more than welcome to use oil. I find the butter does give it a little extra flavor. It might not be as healthy as oils, but it really provides a good flavor to it. And we're going to let that melt in the pan. And now as it's melting, I'm going to swap out my knife, get my spatula instead. All right, now that the butter is bubbling, it's ready to add everything into it. So we're just going to take everything, so the onions, the celery, and the carrots, we're going to dump it right into that butter. And then stir it around a little bit, get the butter all over it, and then we're going to let that simmer for about five minutes until things start to soften up. While we're letting that simmer, I'm going to clean up some of the dishes. Dishes tend to stack up in here pretty darn quick, so I'm going to get those cleaned up. Napoleon is sneezing. All is good. One other thing that's kind of quirky about the base camp is with it being such a small space, the smoke detector tends to go off when you're cooking if there's a lot of steam or a lot of smoke. So how I solve that is I put a dog poop bag on my smoke detector. You don't have to use a dog poop bag, but if you have a shower cap or a grocery bag or anything, just stick it right over and it will save you a lot of smoke detectors going off. Don't forget to take the bag off when you're done. Okay, we're finally getting to the point where the onions are translucent. I like it to have a little more brown on it. I really love that flavoring. You could start adding in other things at this point if you'd like, but I'm going to let it go for another few minutes. Things are starting to brown up a little bit, 
So what we're going to do is add in peas. I usually add in about a cup, cup and a half. It really is up to you how many you want to add in. Now the next part is cooking up the eggs. So what we're gonna do is push all the vegetables to the side, put in a little bit more butter, and then fry the eggs up right there, and then mix it all together once the eggs have been scrambled up a little bit. Ah, not what you wanna do with the eggshells. As the eggs start to cook on the bottom a little bit, you can move them around, start to scramble them. So with the eggs and vegetables all mixed in together, we're going to take the cold rice and we're going to dump it in. You don't want to dump in all of it at once because it will create an issue. So I do about one container at a time. And then as you put that in there, you want to add in the soy sauce and that is going to start adding moisture into the rice and you can just mix it all together and heat it all up. Once all of that is nicely mixed in together, you can add in more rice. You want to get the rice and vegetable ratio down to something that you enjoy. We're actually at a point where we're pretty darn close, so I'm only gonna add a little bit of this in there. And then continue to add soy sauce until it comes to the flavor that you enjoy. You can also add in more salt and pepper, paprika, any other kind of flavorings that you want in there. And as always with food, just taste it before you serve it or before you eat it. Make sure it has good flavor. It needs more salt. All right, and that is how you make fried rice in an RV, or you can also do this recipe in your kitchen at home. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. Just remember this is extremely customizable, so if there are other vegetables, proteins, seasonings that you wanna add in there, feel free, give it a shot. It's really hard to mess up fried rice because you're just mixing it all together and kind of coming up with a unique concoction or something that you enjoy yourself. So it's a really great travel recipe. This is going to last me almost an entire week. I'll put the remainder after tonight into the fridge. Throughout the week, I just heat it up in one of my metal bowls right over the stove. And that's when I add in chicken or eggs or avocado or something to change it up, make the meal more interesting so it doesn't feel like I'm eating the exact same thing every single night. If you do give it a try, I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you think, comment below. And if you liked this video, let me know and I'll make more cooking videos with the other recipes that I eat on the road. Thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.